While the meta has continued to change over the set, Punk has been a consistent reroll comp for those who like early aggression. If that's your style, then this video's for you. Let's break it down. You want to start the early game with Vi and Jinx for 2 Punk. The best headliner to get is Jinx, but Vi is also a solid take. Punk headliner is great if you can manage to get a spatula on Carousel, play for 6 Punk. But if you prefer to stay at 4, then Rapid Fire is better. By level 5, you want to complete 4 Punk with Twitch and Pantheon, then splash in any trait you find. I prefer Frontline early, so I tend to go with a Guardian or a Mosher. Now there's two methods to secure your 3 stars. First, save your gold and roll down at 3-1 for Vi and Jinx 3 star. Second, slow roll your gold at level 5, looking for any punk units, but most importantly, the 1 cost units. Once you hit, move on to level 6 and look for Twitch and Pantheon 3 star. There's a couple things to note when playing punk. You always want to use the 1 cost shop roll every single turn. Not only does it help you find your units, but it scales your comp hard into the late game. Even if you aren't looking for any units, use the roll anyway. Next, you'll be playing all 4 punk units all game. So even if you get a punk headliner but can't find a spat, it's better to sit on 5 punk than to drop one of them. This is because you're always looking to 3 star every punk unit, and the stats you get for using your 1 cost rolls are way too good. By the late game, if you use every single roll, the stats will be equivalent or better to a warmogs and a deathblade on every punk unit you field. Once you've hit your 1 cost 3 stars, it's time to move on to level 6. Here, you want to slow roll for Twitch and Pantheon 3 star. Add in Aphelios for 2 rapid fire. As a side note, if you happen to find a ton of Aphelios, you can 3 star him as well, but don't break the bank looking for him. The next things to do at level 6 and 7 are to get a Mumu and Vexen for 2 Emo and 2 Executioner. Again, if you happen to find a ton of them, you can get 3 stars without spending all of your econ. But if it's going to drain your gold, just stick to getting your punk units and push levels. Lastly, don't forget to continue spending your 1 gold rolls regardless of whether or not you are picking up units. Once we reach the late game, it's all about pushing for levels and finding legendaries. By level 9, you want to add in Yorick and Thresh for a solid 4 Guardian frontline. Then by level 10, add in any choice of legendary you find. Sona is great for added healing or attack speed, Ziggs provides excellent AoE damage, and Kiana is great if you want to farm components for the rest of your team. Lastly, if you didn't get Aphelios 3 star, then you can swap him out for Lucian here as well. If you're playing with a rapid fire headliner, just throw in another legendary of your choice. Regardless of what you choose, there are no wrong answers. Just play your strongest units and whatever legendaries you can 2 star. From here, items, augments, and positioning will determine who takes first. So let's break that down. For damage items, it's really simple. Jinx always needs a Ginsu's and a Last Whisper. After that, any third power item like Deathblade, Infinity Edge, or Giant Slayer will do. For tank items, there's plenty to choose from. Steadfast, Warmogs, and Redemption are excellent choices. Sunfire provides anti-heal, and Bramble or Dragon's Claw, depending on the enemy lobby, can always be played. Now for extra items, any damage items for Twitch or Vex are great additions. Even Shroud is half decent if you're desperate for armor shred and super late into the game, a Shoujin on Sona is a great way to make sure she gets her cast off. Now let's talk about augments. Spoils of War is excellent early game if you have a strong early board, meaning you have multiple 2 stars. A cut above is a perfect choice to give you a death blade plus the potential to generate extra gold. Unified Resistance is excellent here because you won't always be able to field a ton of units, but you'll still get a huge boost to your frontline. Lucky Streak is excellent as an econ augment while providing huge attack speed and can replace Ginsu's in the late game. Crash Test Dummy, much like Unified, gives you bolstered frontline while also stunning the enemy frontline. Pumping Up is a great 2-1 augment choice for scaling attack speed to give you additional stats moving into the late game. Now for positioning, it's fairly straightforward. First, always keep Thresh on the same side as enemy carries. Next, you like a Mumu in the center so his AoE hits as many units as possible. From there, Lucian should be on the same side as enemy carries like Thresh. Although Lucian targets the furthest enemy, there are times when you can shoot straight at the backline without needing to kill the tanks first. Now defensively, you're looking for all the standard things. Make sure to avoid Thresh hooks whenever possible and dives from KDA Akali. To avoid Thresh, carries should be on the opposite side, and to avoid Akali, carries should be on the same side as her. If you choose to play a Lowie, you can always put her tentacles in the back, right, and left corners to bait out Akali. Did this guide help? Drop a comment and tell me how you do. Until next time, I'm Swagadalic.